Spanning the planet. Spanning the planet. You've landed at the pet entertainment center of the universe. Alert the paparazzi. This is Pet Life Radio, the ultimate animal adventure. And good morning or good afternoon to all of you out there on this glorious Sunday. Uh, the Sunday of, I guess, a prolonged Thanksgiving weekend. I hope all of you had a great Thanksgiving. I know I did. i um, curious to know. I mean, I got my phone calls. You know, I, I always, even, despite all the warnings that we give to everybody about Thanksgiving and about the hazards and about the potential problems, et cetera, you, you think, you know, we, I'm going to go through Thanksgiving with not a single call. Uh-uh, didn't happen. We're going to talk about those calls in just a minute. You're here live with Dr. Jeff Werber, your host for the next 30 minutes here on Pet Life Radio's Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff. And uh, we're here for you. We're here to answer your questions. We're here to talk about your pets. Uh, just give me a call. You can reach us at 888-385, excuse me, 877-385-8882. Once again, area code 877-385-8882. You can also uh, log on to PetLifeRadio.com and, and, and just go ahead and you click on the Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff tab. It's on the far left and you will be right here and you can just go ahead and join a conversation. You can also join us, I, I, I hope, on Google Hangouts. We're doing something new. Um, and uh, there's a link on the website, and you can actually be live right here with us, and we can talk about pets. So um, once again, I want to thank our sponsors, which are ProSense Pet Products and Kong, uh, who are helping me be here with you every Sunday, every week. to talk about your pets. Don't be bashful. Don't be shy. Give us a call or join in the conversation or now join us live online. So Thanksgiving, uh, the day was going really well, uh, you know, preparing family, a lot of fun. And uh, all of a sudden the first call comes in that um, one of them, this is while we are, at, you know, haven't even sat down to eat yet. And I get the page and I call it, it happens to be someone, a friend of mine, a client of mine. And he made this huge chocolate cake. We're talking a full chocolate cake, chocolate icing, chocolate all the way. And uh, he was sort of going back and forth between the kitchen and his big screen TV in his den. And all of a sudden, he hears something fall on the floor, runs into the kitchen, and there is his dog licking his chops after devouring. He says at least, at least three quarters of the cake, maybe even more. So, you know, again, it's, it was a big dog, but it was also a big cake. And typically we tell people that, that the chocolate that's in baked products is usually not as, as toxic, as potent as the chocolate that you might find on a, 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 a baker's chocolate bar, which is pure chocolate. Uh, that's the one that's really dangerous. But then again, do you want to sit there early on um, – uh, try, trying to enjoy your Thanksgiving, only to find out that your brain is always going back, uh-oh, what if, what if it was too much, who knows? So I told them, look, most likely we're fine. But if you really want that peace of mind just to happen within the last 15 minutes, why don't you give him some hydrogen peroxide? You gave him hydrogen peroxide. He texted me about 10 minutes later, Doc, it worked, great, thank you so much. And now at least he's able to enjoy the rest of his day without having to worry about his dog. So um, uh, that, uh, unfortunately, it happens. I did not get any turkey bone or, you know, uh, uh, calls. That's a problem because, again, uh, poultry bones are too soft. The dogs love them, of course. Uh, when I was carving our turkeys, we had two. Uh, the, my, my dogs literally were parked underneath me waiting, just waiting for a little bit of their, the, the, the treats, which of course I'm a sap and I give it to them. Of course, it's pure meat. It's no skin. Uh, I try to avoid uh, the dark meats, a little too fatty, but they all did fine. And they love me even more because I give in to those sad eyes. I don't overdo it. We're talking a little small amounts, but you know, I can indulge so they can enjoy the Thanksgiving as much as everybody else. Uh, then uh, I got a call, really nothing to do with Thanksgiving, but it's just so typical that, that you know, it's a, it's a holiday, you like to enjoy it. And uh, this dog got into uh, a bottle, freshly made bottle 
of one of the very popular non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, actually one of my favorite. And the problem is, to, you know, these drug companies are always trying to make it easier for us to administer the medications to our pets, whether it's going to be the vehicle, how it's delivered, whether it's going to be a chewable, if it's taste, whether it's going to be something you can, you know, like a salve. You know, you can, have, you can get a lot of drugs compounded. For example, cats that are sometimes impossible to pill. There are compounding pharmacies that can take some of the very common medications that we even use and put them in a transdermal delivery system, which is like a little salve, a little something you just stick on their ears, and it absorbed in, into the ear, and they reach its blood levels, and it's as if you gave it to them orally. Certainly, uh, there's a, a, an injectable antibiotic now called Convenia, which we all love, and especially cat owners, cat parents love it, uh, thus the name Convenia, because basically you are administering two weeks of antibiotics in one single shot. That means no more fighting with this cat once or twice a day for 14 days or whatever it is to give the, uh, the necessary antibiotic. It's done as an injection, and it is a godsend. So that makes it real easy. But this particular medication, it's a non-steroidal. It's very common. Uh, it's used for post-operative pain. It's used for any kind of pain, really. It's, it's used, we use it a lot for arthritis, bad joints, bad knees, bad hips. And um, uh, it's really tasty. And it's a chewable. In fact, when it first came out on the market, we started getting these calls about the toxicities. I, I even told them, kind of half joking, tongue in cheek, I said, guys, you made it too good. It's too tasty. And these animals, they know, they're watching you put it away. And they're jumping on counters. They're opening up cabinets to try to get to it. So I, I warn, well, of course, with any medication, we strongly caution our pet owners to keep them in places where they are unreachable for pets. And it's interesting, they'll say, I hear this, well, you know, I have it in a childproof container. Are you joking? A childproof container for a dog? That They can get through that faster. I mean, wait, without pulling the top off, they can crack that thing open faster than you can pull the top off. So uh, yeah, that, that doesn't mean anything to a dog. So you have to make sure that you have it tucked away. Uh, but uh, this was, you know, kind of dangerous. We have to treat them very, very, very seriously, not to mention the damage they can do to the gastrointestinal tract, but they have severe potential liver toxic effects. So we have to be very careful and making sure that we um, treat accordingly. If, if it happened within the first couple of hours, we can induce vomiting, get them on, on activated charcoal, charcoal to help minimize or reduce the absorption, um, and then uh, gastroprotectants and liver protectants as well. And to make sure, uh, and of course, fluid support, that's one of the keys. So this one particular dog uh, went home yesterday, um, but uh, it's, you know, it, it's, it's, it's really, it's one of those things come the holidays. And, and this is only, right, this is the second. If you want to count the, 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 the uh, chocolate and candy and candy wrapper and all of those problems we've discussed associated with Halloween, now we're going in to where we just finished Thanksgiving. Uh, in a week or so, we have Hanukkah, and then we have Christmas. It's just, it's going to be, you know, potentially, it could be disastrous for our pets. But we want to make sure we take the precautions. We want to make sure we have a lot of fun. So um, anyway, I don't know if you all had a chance to see uh, this uh, on Thanksgiving Day. It was Foxes. Um, they had their uh, whole rescue uh, show. It was a tribute to rescue pets and rescue agencies. And it was uh, really cute. A lot of great rescue dogs. And then in contrast to that was the Purina Dog Show, uh, which I'm, uh, you know, as you know, I'm, I'm very torn because I, I try to not have people breed anymore. I think we have such a huge problem with pet overpopulation. But I still happen to be in, uh, in awe uh, over some of these breeds, these pure breeds, and how amazing they are trained and how amazing they look. Uh, that, I mean, the bearded collie, the Newfoundland, the Frenchie, the Frenchie, my, one of my favorite dogs, uh, came in, uh, best in, best in breed or best in class, I should say, uh, and the non-sporting dogs. That was really cool. Um, and then that's uh, Sky Terrier who won the whole thing, but I'm telling you, if you got a chance to see it, those dogs are absolutely magnificent. Um, but then in contrast to that was watching this show on the, the special on the rescues. And that was 
that was really amazing too. They showed one dog. It was it was such a sad story. Um, pure neglect, abuse. This poor thing was skin and bone. Um, picked up, taken to a shelter. I mean, taken from the shelter. It was about to be put to sleep, and uh, the, it was treated, uh, hand fed, uh, fluids. I mean, all the things you need to do to slowly, slowly build this dog up, and then they show it afterwards at a home with another dog in a family. And uh, this dog was just having a blast. It was just unbelievable to see. So that's a, that's a really nice, uh, nice story. And it's so nice to hear. So if you want to do something great and holidays are coming up, uh, adopt a pet. How great would that be? Uh, it'd be great for your home. Um, I think I just told, told you about this, but my, um, my son felt badly that his solo dog was solo. And he, uh, he works, so you know, the, the dog was alone a lot. He could take him to work often, but, but uh, so he went and he saw, it's a, it's a Frenchie, it's a French bulldog named Carlos. And he, he uh, saw, he went onto an English bulldog rescue site here in Los Angeles, and he found Mo. Mo was a, they said nine, but we found out, but looking to go through his paperwork, he's probably eight year old pretty badly neglected. I, I, I really don't like the term abuse. It wasn't like he was beat up or, or, or tortured in any way, but he, he was just, no one really took good care of him. He was, his skin was in bad shape. He was underweight. Uh, very, very like, he was very fearful of people. I just, he just didn't have much interaction. He wasn't socialized and he was up for adoption. So my son thought, you know, uh, you know, it's tough sometimes to adopt a dog that you know, you're not going to have for a long time. And I, you know, equate it to people that I know, some of them, many clients of mine, because I see these dogs that do the puppy raising for the canine companions for independence or for, you know, guide dogs of America. Um, and so, you know, these are dogs that they're, they're, they're usually in-house bred dogs, retrievers. Now they're mixing labs and goldens, but you know, whatever dog they use, whatever breed they use, and they have to get them socialized and, and basic training. So they send them to people who just take them for the first six months before they can start their rigorous training, sometimes even uh, up to a year, maybe 10 months. And I say, how do you do that? You, you go through the hardest part. You're doing the, the paper training. You're doing the house training. You're training them to sit, stay, heal, all those things. And they are, you know, they're growing up. They're starting to become so much a part of your family. And then you give them up. And it's got to be so tough. And, you know, they say that the, 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 the payoff is so worth it, so much worth it, that that's, the, that's why they do it. And that's how I feel about my son, Brandon, uh, uh, getting Mo. So anyway, Mo is, he's put on the weight. He is so well-trained. He is house-trained already. Um, and it took him three minutes to start getting along with Carlos. And he, uh, I have it at our house now, and again, I have five dogs. And my little guys, my Frenchies, he took to right away. My very old Labrador took to right away. And uh, yesterday we worked on uh, the Labradoodle and my younger Labrador, um, both of whom are not necessarily the friendliest dog to strange dogs. To people, yes, but not to other dogs. Anyway, uh, they are so cute together, it's unbelievable. So if, if you have an opportunity, that's what I'd recommend as you are preparing to think about what am I going to get for the kids for the holidays. Um, and when we come back, I'm going to also give you some thoughts to think about, things to think about when thinking about gifts for others. So don't go away. We'll be right back here on Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff here on Pet Life Radio, here on Google Hangouts. Um, and uh, we'll see you back in a minute. We'll be right back, right after these messages. Stay tuned. We mature, handsome types need a little special attention. Does your dog suffer from joint and arthritis pain? Deteriorating muscle and joint problems are very common in aging dogs. It's easy to alleviate your dog's discomfort at home with ProSense. ProSense joint care products can help make your dog's life as pain-free as possible, providing effective relief for flare-ups and also lubricate and strengthen damaged cartilage. ProSense products are veterinary formulated and recommended to ensure the very best for your pet. Try ProSense today. Your dog will thank you for it. Pets love life. Love them back with ProSense. 
At Red Barn, our pet food ingredients work overtime. They aren't just there for show. Dandelion greens work to maintain a healthy digestive system. Salmon oil works to enhance the immune system. Green-lipped mussels work to support joint health. These hard-working ingredients support your dog's active, healthy life. Look at the label. We want you to. Red Barn Naturals Pet Food. Simply the best. Find it in your local pet specialty store. Try our grain-free stews. The only pet food with Red Barn Bully Sticks. Is your indoor cat bored? Do you worry about your outdoor cat's safety? A catio in outdoor cat enclosure is the perfect solution for feline enrichment and peace of mind. Catio Spaces offers a variety of do-it-yourself catio plans to save you time and money. Build a catio yourself or have a carpenter build one for you. Visit catiospaces.com today. Gift certificates are also available. Create a positive cat attitude this holiday season with catiospaces.com. It's designerpetsweaters.com. Hand-knitted designer sweaters for your precious pup or cool cat. Beautiful couture patterns for your pets, including custom-knitted formal wear, casual wear, yachting, and even sports-themed. Many designer pet sweaters include feathered tammy hats, top hats, and a lot of sparkle. Each sweater includes leg loops, front paw sleeves, and leash opening. Visit designerpetsweaters.com to order your four-legged fashions today. Your pets will stay warm for the winter and be runway ready. Large or small, we fit them all. Designerpetsweaters.com Begging to hear more of your favorite show? <laughs> Full episodes of all our shows are available on demand. Go to PetLifeRadio.com to fetch our entire lineup of possum pet podcasts. Also, dig us up in iHeartRadio Talk and iTunes. Let's talk pets. <laughs> Live and on demand only from Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> And welcome back. You're here live with Dr. Jeff Werber, your host here on Pet Life Radio's Ask the Vet with Dr. Jeff. Now we just finished talking about um, ho- um, well holidays and also rescue pets after the Fox uh, Dog Rescue Celebration uh, special that aired on Thanksgiving. And um, you know, as we know, and I know there's so many programs here on Pet Life Radio that seem to highlight the plight of many of these animals and 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 the rescue world. And um, I. Uh, I, I encourage people to, when they have an opportunity, if they have an opportunity, if they're thinking about getting a pet, before you start looking at these pure breeds, which, you know, could be great. I have some pure breeds as well. Um, but, man, the rescue dogs are amazing. It's like you're getting the best of both worlds, uh, not to mention you're saving a life. So they're going to save your life because they're going to bring so much life into yours. And uh, and yet you're saving a life as well. Uh, because I'm telling you, there's so many animals that are continually being put to sleep in our shelters, and we're talking very wonderful, adoptable animals. But one caution, uh, and I, I unfortunately hear about this all too often, and that is if, and I mean if you were thinking about getting a pet for someone else, I would stop thinking right now. Uh, it's great to have the thought, and even if you know that they are looking or want, it's something you don't want to spring on them um, because what tickles your fancy may not tickle theirs. And then this poor creature is going to be brought back into a shelter. So if you are thinking that that's what you want to do, there are some other ways to go about it. Number one, if it's for a family and the problem, or I should say the gift is really for children, then take one of the parents with you to the shelter and make it a joint decision. Uh, it's really ultimately their decision, but at least if you're really more of a, of a pet savvy person, uh, you can help guide them, but it's really got to be their decision. If it's for everybody and you want to surprise them, give them a gift certificate to include, say, the pet, the adoption fee, whatever shots come with it, et cetera, and give it that way and let them go to the shelter of their choice, or you can even make, if you know that you know, there's a great rescue or a great shelter out there, uh, you can send them, that's okay, but let them do the choosing. 
because I, I, I can't tell you how many stories I hear that someone gets a gift, it's a pet, and you know, it's not like getting a lot or a TV set. I mean, we're talking something that, that even if you don't like it or you already have it, right, and you want a different model or you want a different size, you can return it. That's not what you want to do with your pets. So you want to make the right choice at the beginning. And uh, so that's what I recommend you do. Kind of make it a joint fun uh, project as opposed to just springing a pet onto somebody. And especially if you don't know or if you've been trying to talk to me too, and they keep saying, no, no, no. And your solution is, okay, I got it. I got it. I'm going to surprise them with the pet. It's going to be fantastic, right? Oh, my God. That's a huge mistake. Don't even think about doing that. So uh, moving on, you know, I like to, uh, we have a couple of uh, uh, pet news sites that I, I kind of peruse. And this, I found a, a couple of stories that I found very interesting. Number one, China is building a $31 million, ready for this, animal cloning facility that's going to be ready in about a year. They plan to clone, raise, and sell dogs, uh, racehorses, and cattle. And of course, the animal community uh, is up in arms because they're, they're claiming, wait a second, time out. We just got to talk, finish talking about the rescues and about these animals and shelters and how many are being put to sleep. Do we really want to contribute to that number? And uh, their, their answer is, no, no. First of all, we're not interested in, in pets. It's going to be cattle for industry uh, and food. It's going to be um, uh, racehorses, which, as we know, is big business. Uh, it's going to be uh, endangered species. Uh, that's a big one. And um, uh, what else do they also want to do? Oh, and um, search and rescue dogs. That's a biggie because there's something, some innate talent in these dogs. And uh, if they, they, what they want to do is they want to be able to promote and help breed more of these uh, search and rescue dogs. So they plan on cloning very successful dogs and, uh, and, and contributing that way. But I thought that was rather, rather interesting. Uh, I, you know, it's even even when you have, for example, uh, identical twins, which are the same genetic material. Uh, though there, it is science has shown there's a lot of similarities, even the way they look. And um, but if they're raised in completely different environments, if they were separated at birth, for example, and adopted out, we know that their basic nature and personality uh, can be modified by environment. So just because you clone a dog and your favorite dog and has the best behavior and whatever quirks it has and you want to you want to you know duplicate those don't think for a second that that's going to happen. And they've shown that time and again that it it it's not it's not the same because there are so many other factors that go in to how our pets develop, how we develop that it's not a guarantee that just because you're using the exact same genetic material, you're going to get the exact same pet. So keep that in mind if you're even thinking about it personally. I think the beauty of having pets that don't have all the same personalities makes it even more fun. You know, inevitably, you know, what I see as uh, from future pets, and I tell this to people all the time that are that are faced with the difficult decision of having to say goodbye, and I hear the following. I'm never going to do this again. Never getting another pet. You get too attached. You get to this. You get to that. It's so sad. Yeah, it's sad. But what's even sadder is not having a pet in your life. And what I tell people all the time, I tell them, don't wait too long. Because my feeling is that the best way to memorialize a deceased pet is through a future pet. How? Because inevitably, and we see it, I see it to this day. I mean, I have a lot of animals in the house that there's always going to be something. It's a, it's a behavior. It's an expression. It's a quirk. It's a vocalization. It's something that you will find yourself saying, oh, my God, so-and-so, a past pet used to do that. I'm forever talking about it when I see my dog. I mean, currently, my, my, I, I had a great – one of my past yellow labs, his name was Chester. He was the most adorable dog, but impossible. I always joke that his – what he was lacking in brain, he made up for in heart. And trust me, he had a huge heart. So you could, you could play the analogy. Um, and now my current yellow lab, all right, and his name is Tommy. And he, 
He's Chester all over again. He's Chester reborn, no doubt about it. The dog has the, the small, he's a pea brain, but he's got a heart as big as gold. He loves to swim, as did Chester. He is wild. He runs through the house. If there, he, he has to find a toy. He can't be running around without a toy in his mouth. And that is Chester. So I'll never, I'll never forget Chester because I have Tommy. And it's the same thing with my first one, Thor, who is this magnificent black lab. And when I say first, my first personal dog, not a family pet. He was my high school graduation present who went away to college with me. I took him up to Berkeley. He got to go to class with me. He would walk on camp. He, we were inseparable. He was on my side almost all the time. And it was the best. So uh, th that's how we memorialize our pets. So I think that uh, uh, it's a great idea to get for somebody, but don't spring it on somebody. Make sure they're ready. And uh, if you can, go shopping with them. Another uh, quickie, uh, as we're getting low on time here, there is a bug, and many may have heard of it, called a kissing bug. It's the uh, uh, triatomine or triatomine or triatomine uh, bug, and it carries a disease called Chagas disease, C-H-A-G-A-S. And the reason they get the name kissing is because they literally will, especially when you're sleeping, they'll jump, they, 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 can, they live in houses, they'll crawl in your bed, and they'll like, literally bite you right on the lips. And if they carry this particular disease, you could get this disease. And without treatment, it's potentially deadly. So, you know, of, of course, the headline says deadly kissing bug is now in Texas and Georgia and Pennsylvania, expecting everybody in Texas, Georgia, and Pennsylvania to lock up shop. You know, no. Uh, the likelihood of, of death, well, first, the likelihood of getting Chagas disease is low, and likelihood of death is even lower uh, because it could be treated. But it's uh, yes, if 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 you are bitten and they are carrying the disease and you don't get treatment, yes, then yet yes, there's a possibility of dying from the bite. But I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't panic too much. But it is interesting that the kissing bug you may have heard of it is out there. It's real and uh, it's now here in the U.S. as well. Um, and lastly, they were talking about a case, and I had to laugh when I read it because I had this exact same thing. There is, you know. A lot of times we take when, when dogs swallow things, one of the things we do is in a sense we hope that it is will be radio opaque, meaning it'll show up on x-ray. So uh, one time I took the dog was vomiting, it was sick. There was history that may have eaten a toy and a plastic, one of the kids' toys. So I take the x-ray and what do I see? I see as, as clear as can be two double A batteries sitting in the stomach. And uh, well, that's probably why they, you know they're they're pretty toxic, and you know there's a lot of uh, battery acid in there. It can ruin the heck out of the esophagus. And sure enough, we have to go in surgically and remove the batteries. Uh, if you if you're lucky enough to have a scope, if you if they're strong enough, the the the, the um, grabbers on the scope, you might be able to pull them out. But uh, this dog ended up doing just great. But anyway, I saw. I guess I'm not. It's one, probably one of those things that, that I would be silly to think that I'm the only veterinarian who ever took batteries out of a dog's stomach. So anyway, uh, there you have it. Uh, thanks for joining us. We are trying this new Google Hangout thing. If you go on and click on our, you know, the Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff tab, uh, you, right under the Join the Conversation, you'll see a little um, alert that says, got a question? You can just join us on Google Hangout and click here to join. And there's the link and just uh, click on it. And next time I wanna hear from you, I wanna see you, I wanna see your picture, your face live and talk to me here on Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff here on Pet Life Radio. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for our sponsors, ProSense and Kong. And we'll see you right here, same time next week. Have a great week, everybody.